So, on this episode of Star Trek Lower Decks Terminal Provocations. I know it's Lower Decks, but I'm starting with the crew off the brig who are facing down against an alien that wants space debris that they believe they have first dibs at, I guess. <laughs> and they and when the alien becomes hostile, Freeman chooses not to fight, reminding everyone that they are Starfleet, which is of course a thing. We gets this phrase, we are Starfleet, it gets repeated a lot throughout this entire episode, but... So also in this episode, Beckett and Boimler get close to one another with their choo-chooing. I don't know what choo-chooing is, but and it's never even shown except for this one scene and then there's a bit of a flashback where after they confront the crew of the Delta or the Delta crew, that's the crew that takes over once they go to sleep. <laughs> then we see in a flashback that their accusations against the Delta crew were not accurate because the Delta crew were also at the Choo Choo and I guess that's some of them behind there you can see the Delta crew members but um, yeah so but, but the main thing really is this guy the guy in the middle is Fletcher Fletcher is what you may call an incompetent employee <laughs> this guy Beckett is angry because he's hired to do something with the warp core and he screws up by trying to make himself smarter and accidentally turn in the warp core sentient and then try trying to cover up by claiming that he was attacked by an alien who then uh, took the warp core later they discover this is not true so then beckett and boimler team up to kind of solve the solution of the warp core which is basically to eject it <laughs> simple right of course there's a berserk warp core going about and this dude is yelling and screaming and bickering and moaning and crying about not wanting to lose his job and taking them down with him this guy is probably clearly in the show to show that beckett and Boimler, for all the complaints, are very good at their jobs. At one point, he accuses Beckett of taking shortcuts, and Beckett points out that she only ignores orders if it pertains to something very, very small and stupid, but she would never endanger another person the way this guy has done. <laughs> and I guess that sort of addresses a lot of the accusations against Beckett Mariner, that she's a Mary Sue, but as you can clearly see, and I vehemently disagree with that, I think the people yelling about Mary Suits are just very, very tired, toxic individuals, whether they know it or not, but Beckett Mariner has earned her stripes. So her incompetence doesn't exist, but we also see that she's a very thoughtful person. This even comes back when she is expected to rat out Fletcher to the to the uh, higher ups after they found out about the warp core, which by the way saves the day. She doesn't. She doesn't rat him out, and instead she and Boimler come up with a solution to essentially get him transferred to the Titan, which we learn is Boimler's, uh, I guess, his most desired ship, the ship he wants to work on and <laughs> that doesn't actually last very long it lasts about six days because the guy is incompetent and turns out he dumped trash down i guess the warp core there or something to do with the engineering room and well they fired him <laughs> but anyway i always this guy looks a little bit like miles o'brien no the curly brown hair eh, i'm just saying Nothing in this show so far has been anything short of deliberate, so I, I wouldn't be surprised if he was loosely modeled on Miles O'Brien, like a skinnier version. <laughs> so also in this episode are Rutherford and Tendi, 
And that little guy next to them is Badgy. Pretty hilarious. He's a take on those old Microsoft Office clippy guy. It's this little clippy thing that would follow you all across Microsoft Office Word document and you couldn't get rid of him. Cute but annoying. Same idea. Well, thanks to the behavior of Fletcher, he goes berserk and starts trying to kill them. That's them running away from him in a... I think this is supposed to be a Bajoran marketplace because they need to get away from this deranged guy. It reminded me a little bit. This was for me the funniest part of the show. Not only the take on Clippy, this guy's badgy, but also the fact that he was, um, he reminded me a little bit of Hal in um, 2001 A Space Odyssey after he went deranged and tried to kill them and then beg for his life and this guy does something very similar <laughs> he keeps like saying these one-off things i'm gonna murder you i'm gonna eat you and drink your blood and he's just completely deranged <laughs> at the end there's a little funny scene between him and rutherford whom he calls father and rutherford calls him son and there's this touching moment where rutherford has to essentially put him out of his misery and it's <laughs> very it's supposed to obviously um mock those kind of overly emotional death scenes in movies even if it's like wrath of khan between kirk and spock but it's pretty hilarious but of course this is due to um, a holodeck incident uh after the protocols the safety protocols have been turned off and Batchy became more sapient this is of course again going back to what fletcher did with the core but obviously it gets resolved and Badgy goes back to being sort of normal. <laughs> At the end, it's kind of implied that he has retained some of his sapience, even though he's not completely deranged anymore. <laughs> but they still don't trust him. They're like, yeah, we're kind of we're kind of going to say no. So he's actually he was created to help Rutherford teach Tendi how to spacewalk going back to the plot um regarding the the main crew on the brig where they're fighting over space junk and the crew is expected to spacewalk and i guess gather the debris and Tendi admits she doesn't know how to do that and rutherford is like yeah i created a program to help you learn and that's how we ended up with psycho deranged Badgy who decides to take control and go after them. Pretty funny stuff. But again, this is the Tendi Rutherford dynamic and we had the Boimler Beckett dynamic and I'm fine with it. I guess they're establishing what these two duos mean to one another, but I would love to see them switch it up. I would love to see Tendi with Beckett. I would love to see Rutherford with Boimler. I would love to see Rutherford with Beckett and I would love to see Tendi with Boimler. I don't know. I feel I would love to see that switch up so it's not the same crew over and over again doing working together. Like what if this was instead of Rutherford and Tendi, maybe Tendi and Beckett, for example. Not that there was a problem with the episode. Like previous episodes, it's a bit fast and you have to watch it more than once to get it, to get a lot of the jokes. It's hard to say which of the three plots were my favorite or least favorite. Maybe the brig crew because not much happened there except Freeman is, Captain Freeman is again trying to avoid war until the warp core issue was solved by Beckett and Boimler stuffing it out, ejecting it from the ship and it ended up going after the alien ship and basically <laughs> destroying it or sabotaging it. Hey, the crew of the Cerritos won. But anyway, it's a good episode. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you love it, like it, okay, so-so. Drop me a comment, subscribe.